Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the GSMC Hockey Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Garrison McDaniel, and we have a great show for you guys today where it is July 1st, which marks the first day of the NHL calendar and the offseason. It's officially free agent time here in the NHL. <clears throat> and there was a whole host of free agents that have hit the market and that have actually signed with teams all today. Today was absolutely an insane one for news, so we're going to spend three segments today talking about free agents. The first one, segment one, we'll be going over NHL free agency, just giving you a roundup of who signed, where they signed. Uh, that'll set us up for later, talking more uh, in-depth about the teams and talking about who came away with the best ones. That'll be our fifth segment, winners and losers. Our second segment today, we will be talking about draft grades from the NHL draft that happened on Friday. We're going to do segment two will be our Eastern Conference grades. Segment three will be the Western Conference grades. And then in our fourth segment, we will be talking about the top UFAs after that remain on the board after day one. But as always, guys, if you guys would love or if you guys would like to help support the show in more ways than you already do, use the tips and donations link at the GSMCpodcast.net. You can ask me a question using that link. It'll show up on the screen and it'll... It'll add a more interactive style here to the GSMC Hockey Podcast. But without further ado, we're going to get right into this because there is a lot to talk about. First segment today, NHL Free Agency. Day one recap. I'm going to just start listing off names here uh, and give brief, very brief um, reactions to all of them. So we'll start with last night. Last night was the last day to re-sign UFAs, and then a bunch of RFAs did re-sign as well. So Max Domi, who was going to be entering the market, re-signed for a four-year, $15 million deal with the Maple Leafs. That's about three-point-something a year. Not a bad deal for the Maple Leafs that add the veteran forward and Max Domi, who has been 40-50 point scorer. Good third-line guy right there. They also re-signed Timothy Liljegren. Utah Hockey Club, who was busy today, re-signed an RFA. The Devils, or the Devils, the Ducks re-signed an RFA. And the... And the Detroit Red Wing re-signed Patrick Kane to a one-year, $4 million deal. Today, uh, today or tonight, I didn't know really when this news broke, but I saw it this morning. Jake Gensel re-signs, or not re-signs, Jake Gensel signs with the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Tampa Bay Lightning acquired Jake Gensel in a sign-and-trade with the Carolina Hurricanes. I believe they gave up a third-round pick. Uh, for it in 2025, and Jake Gensel signed a seven-year, $63 million contract, making him a $9 million per year AAV. That is a steep one, but it's a good one for Jake Gensel. You have Sam Reinhart re-signed with the uh, Florida Panthers to an eight-year, $69 million deal. That was north of eight. I believe it was eight, eight something for Sam Reinhart, who is a fantastic two-way forward. Really proved his worth this year uh, in a contract year. That's why he got such a big contract. But honestly, it's so worth it. Uh, I follow this guy on Twitter called Jay Fresh. He posts a bunch of uh, wars. If if you guys are familiar with uh, baseball, wins above replacement, uh, and he uses it in percentiles. Uh, Sam Reinhardt is in like the 100th percentile in expected value on defense in the 90-something percentile in expected value on offense. Very great uh, addition or very great re-sign for the Florida Panthers with a name that was going to be the biggest name in free agency. But now the Florida Panthers can kind of run it back. Uh, Chris Tanev this morning signed with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Eric Johnson uh, re-signed with the Flyers after playing 67 games for them. Carmichael McMichael re-signed with the Washington Capitals. Uh, Kasper Kapanen re-signed with the St. Louis Blues. That's a good re-sign for the Blues. He is a, a valuable forward. Uh, another big piece of news that hit very early in this morning, the Devils re-signing Brett Pesci to a six-year, $33 million contract that comes out to about a five-point 5 AAB for Brett Pesci, a fantastic blue liner. Going across the division to the New Jersey Devils is uh, an interesting one to say the least. Next, it's Jordan Marinook going to the Carolina Hurricanes, signing a three-year $9.15 million deal with the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, That is a very good forward. um, That is a very good forward signing for the Canes, who lost a lot of pieces in this free agency. So we'll see what they look like next season with a lot of teams winning the day i would say that we'll talk about it in the fifth segment but they might be one of the losers there 
Uh, Sam Lafferty, a 29-year-old forward, went to Buffalo on a two-by-two -two deal. Uh, Brandon Montour going from the Stanley Cup winning uh, Florida Panthers all the way to the Seattle Kraken. He goes for a seven-year, $50 million deal, making uh, that's about 7.1, 7 .7 somewhere around that 7.1, 7.2. Got to do quick maths here. Uh, but Brandon Montour, a valuable defenseman. He is a little bit on the older side, but for the Seattle Kraken, adding a valuable veteran defenseman is good for their blue line. I don't know how... I think the Kraken are a little bit far from being able to compete. That's what's a little bit worrisome with this deal. However, uh, we'll see what it looks like at the end of it. He might be a buyout contract come, coming down the line. That's kind of what I'm really looking for. The Washington Capitals uh, bolstered their blue line, adding Jacob Chitrin and Matt Roy. Um, they traded for Jacob Chitrin. Uh, with the Senators, that was a very great trade for the Capitals, and then they signed Matt Roy to a seven by three or seven seven year thirty eight and a half million dollar deal. So that's about a five point three something uh, deal, if I can do quick math here. Uh, so that is those are good acquisitions for the blue line for the Capitals. This team is doing a lot of interesting stuff, really going all in for next season. We'll see what it looks like for Ovi's. I, this really, to me, is seeming like they're building for Ob's kind of last season. We'll see if these free agent signings and these acquisitions, they're, they've added a lot of a lot of talent to that roster. So we'll see what it looks like next season. Um, we'll be talking about that probably more in depth on Wednesday, talking about the Devils, the Capitals, and the um, and the Utah Hockey Club kind of going all in for next year. Next is the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, who are focused on surrounding Connor Bedard with some more talent. They add Tyler Bertuzzi, Tabo Teravainen, Pat Maroon, Alec Martinez, and Craig Smith. So, Alec Martinez, I don't like the deal. It's a one by four. Uh, I think $4 million is a little bit steep, but it's only a one year, so you're not adding term. A lot of these teams are adding term to these contracts that they're giving out and, get, and getting less on the AAV for them, um, but I, I I kind of like what the Blackhawks did here with Alec Martinez, but I do think $4 million for a 37, maybe 38-year-old defenseman might be a little bit steep. Tyler Bertuzzi is a good accusation. Tyler Bertuzzi will help that top six a lot. Table Terra Vinen, I think, was the steal of the day. I think everybody should have been looking for Table Terra Vinen. He, is, he goes for uh, five point something, I think that's an absolute steal. I would probably give him seven if I was a GM. This is why I'm not a general manager. But Tavo Teravine in a three by sixteen point two, I think is a fantastic contract for the um for the Chicago Blackhawks, and I think it'll age well. Pat Maroon to a one by one point three, the veteran forward will help that bottom six out, and Craig Smith will also help the bottom six out for the Blackhawks. Uh, Eric Comrie re-signs with the Jets. Oliver Ekman Larson, after winning a Stanley Cup uh, with the Florida Panthers, he goes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, adding to the blue line of the Toronto Maple Leafs as they have been working on bolstering it. Now with Chris Tanev and OEL on there, uh, it looks a little bit better. It's a 4 by 14 uh, for Oliver Ekman Larson, which I think is very good. Uh, Tyler Toffoli going to the San Jose Sharks. That top six on San Jose looks very good now. The Predators. Now, this is the big moment here. The Predators went out today and absolutely won the day. Uh, I think everybody kind of has that same opinion. They get Steven Stamkos, which was the number one target on everybody's free agency board. He signs for a 4 by $32 million deal after the Tampa Bay Lightning offered him $3 million per year, signs an $8 million per year deal with the National Predators, which is what he is worth. Jonathan Marcheso, 5 by 4 uh, five by five, so twenty-five million dollar total deal for Jonathan Marcheso. I think that is a fantastic contract uh, for a Stanley Cup or a Conn Smythe winning forward there. And Brady Shea adding to the blue line, he's going to play fantastic with Roman Yossi. I love that defensive pairing now for the National Predators. Now they're adding uh, to the already uh, established forwards of that core: Philip Forsberg, Ely. Uh, Ely Tolvanen and UC Saros is now getting built up because of these additions. I think the Predators are really going to contend in the West for a couple of years now. Uh, as they were the eighth seed, they were a playoff team. They add three All Stars. That's huge. Uh, so the Predators form a new big, big three with uh, some fantastic signings. And then 
for a m m split moment, I think that a lot of people believe that EDS Lindholm would add to that core in Nashville, but he ends up signing with Boston to a seven by uh, seven by seven and a half, I think. Uh, fifty-four point two five million dollars for Eli Ashlindholm over the next seven years. The Bruins add a fantastic center in Eli Ashlindholm. We'll see how that uh contract uh ages as he didn't have the best year in Vancouver and or he had a very good postseason in Vancouver. He didn't have a good regular season, so we'll see where he's at in his career. Uh, Ian Cole goes to the Utah Hockey Club for three point one million dollars for only one year. David Perron uh. He signs a two-year, $4 million contract with the Senators, two-by-two. Two. The Flames re-sign Jaeger Shorengovich Shuren for five years, 28.75. Uh, worst and best deal of the day. Uh, question from Tim. Worst and best deal of the day. I think the worst deal... I don't like the Elias Lindholm deal for the Bruins. I think that that is a little concerning. Um, I think that... The best deal is either Victor Arvidsson or uh, Jeff Skinner going to the Edmonton Oilers. They got two fantastic forwards uh, for very little. Four million dollars for Victor Arvidsson and three, what was it? Three, I think it was three on the dot for uh, Jeff Skinner. I love that uh, for the Edmonton Oilers. And their top six looks amazing now. And you can really afford to have... Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl split up. I think what we saw in the Stanley Cup final was those two having to play on one line, and that really hit their depth. So what they do is get fantastic depth pieces. I am a little bit concerned of Jeff Skinner's defense. Uh, I think that he might be one of the worst defensive fours in all of the NHL. So we'll see how that works with you know Leon Draisaitl, who is already not the best defensive center in the NHL. So we'll see how that works, but I think it's fantastic for the Edmonton Oilers. Um, you next up, Victor Arvidsson by a two by eight, so two two year deal, four million dollars AAV. Anthony Mantha resigned with the or Anthony Mantha signs with the Calgary Flames. Uh, you have Jakob Slavin, eight year deal or an eight year extension for the Car. Carolina Hurricanes for Jakob Slavin, which is fantastic as well. Uh, love the Teravinen deal. Uh, like like you mentioned, Skinner on a one-year deal is good. Yeah, the Teravinen deal is fantastic. I, Like I said, I would probably give him $7 million per year. I think that that guy is a fantastic forward. Worked very well in Carolina. I think he's a point-per-game player. So him only getting $5 million is absolutely insane. That actually might be my best... That might be my best deal over the... Um, two Edmonton signings. I think Terravina might be more of an impact signing. Uh, but down down the line, not too many more to talk about. Jacob DeBrus to the Vancouver Canucks is also a huge addition for that team. But I think the Canucks have lost more than they've gained. So I don't expect them repeating their success this season. Uh, you also have Sean Monahan going to the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets by a five-year, 5.25 deal. And Jonathan Druin re-signing with the Avalanche. Matt Duchesne re-signing with the Avalanche. Stephen, Stephen Nesson re-signing with the Devils. Uh, yeah, just a lot of a lot of re-signings down the line in the day. Um, as as the day wrapped up, not too many more contracts were thrown out. There's there's you know depth pieces all over the place getting re-signed here and there, but. The big names, I believe we've talked about them all. That's where all of them ended up. In our fifth segment, we'll be talking more about what it looks like. So that'll wrap it up for our first segment. When I come back, we'll be talking about the draft here as this is a busy part of the offseason. So we can't get into everything that I want to talk about today. But we'll go into the Eastern Conference draft grades right after this short break. <laughs> 